Hello, beautiful human. I have a tutorial today that I want to show you that's going to change the game as you are creating graphics for your business. There are usually a couple of subtle shifts when I see business owners posting, whether it's to Instagram or whether it's flyers or whatever they're creating for their business graphic wise. There's usually a couple of little tweaks they can do to make their graphics look so much more professional, look like I created it for them um, and just help it to actually read better and be more strategic. I'm going to show you exactly what that tip is and some examples of how you can use it in all of your graphics today. So hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Jackie and I am a graphic designer who is so passionate about helping business owners create their own incredible brand and graphics using programs just like Canva. I teach this every day in my program, my course, DIY is on my biz, open for enrollment at any point if you are interested in support there. Also got lots of free resources around that and I'm coming back here every second Friday teaching you new tutorials. So today I want to teach you, not a pretty word, not a, not a fun thing people always think about, but a design principle that is going to make all the difference as you're designing. And that design principle is called high Hierarchy. hierarchy is this idea that you're taking your audience on a visual journey through your graphic. You're helping them to notice one part of your graphic before they notice the next part and then the next part and the next part. And I think a concept that pairs really closely to this that I'm going to talk to you probably almost interchangeably today is, is, is contrast in sizing. Contrast in sizing is a huge way that people can make their graphics look really dynamic and interesting and fun and cool without actually having to do too much work other than changing the sizing of their text compared to other pieces of text on their graphic. I'm going to show you a ton of examples on this to help you kind of understand this point. So let's dive in. Firstly, I want you to look at this graphic here. I want you to pay attention. I'm, I'm not going to show it just yet. I'm going to show you a graphic and I want you to pay attention to where your eyes go. Pay attention to what your eyes are doing, what piece of text it looks at first and then where it goes after that. All right, you ready? If you're like 98% of the people I've shown this graphic to, you will have read this graphic the way it tells you to. You will have read this first and then you will have read this and then this and then finally this. And that is a power we have as the person designing our business graphics to create and tell a story and take someone on a journey through our graphics. Because the risk of if we don't have some strong hierarchy in a graphic, it might mean that our graphic becomes either unprofessional looking, we've discussed that, but also it actually isn't digestible. People aren't wanting to read it because it looks overwhelming. If all of this text was the exact same size, for example, you are far less likely to read it because it's just a giant paragraph of text. Unless you're in quite invested into the person sharing said text, nothing's going to pop out at you. Nothing's going to stand out. Nothing's going to capture your attention. You're probably just going to scroll past or drive past or whatever your, your, your content is. It's going to be not read or not digested because it's not in a way and in a form that encourages people to want to join in. And so what I want to teach you is how you can actually use this concept of hierarchy to create graphics that people want to read, that people want to digest and that actually stand out, capture attention and look good. Uh, and so hierarchy is this idea that we're taking that person on a journey. And so some ways that you can create hierarchy is a few things. They're really obvious. They're not rocket science. And half of this actually just involves shifting your mind to when you're creating a graphic being like, what do I want people to understand first here? And how can I actually take them on that journey? And so you can do that through a few different strategic design principles and design methods. The first one is sizing. If something's really large, someone is much more likely to read it first. That one, it's it's so obvious, but doing these things will make a big difference. So first thing is if you want someone to see something first in your graphic, then make the size really large. They're going to be able to see that first. Another way might be color. If I have a black piece of text that's the same size as a yellow piece of text and it's on a white background, usually I'm going to be able to notice the, the black piece of text first because that contrast and that color is standing out more. So it's going to jump out at me first. Another one is background. If you're, this is kind of a similar concept to the color one is if your background is really dark, but your text is really light, it's going to help it to stand out more. I've done an example of this here where I've put a peach block of color behind the text and that's actually helping this to stand out even more so than our original version that didn't have that big block of color behind it. So backgrounds can play a big key into how your text is read. And lastly, there's this positioning. Usually, at least in the West, we read top to bottom, left to right. And so you can use that way of thinking and that way of reading to help your graphics be read in the way that you want them to be. But all of these isn't a hard and fast rule. So for example, with this, with the positioning, you can see this text at the very top. And finally, this, that text is, is actually at the top. People tend to read top to bottom, don't they? But you actually would have read that last because it's, con 
it, it's paired with that idea of a small piece of text and that small contrast. And so using sizing and all of these different principles together is what's going to help your design to not only strategically communicate, but also look good. So I'm going to show you some designs now of some graphics that kind of look really great. And I want to tell you why they look great. And then I'm going to ruin them so you can see what the difference is. So the first one here has quite a quite a few different pieces of text. It's telling me about Happy Hour Real Estate. It's telling me their business name. It's telling me the time that I can do that. And it's telling me the people that are going to be there. But if this graphic was done differently, where there wasn't this strong sizing hierarchy and this sizing contrast, I wouldn't know where to look and it probably wouldn't capture my attention. So I'm going to duplicate this design and show you now how you can do a really bad job of it. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller up here because I'm going to need some more room to butcher my text around. <laughs> <laughs> so to show you this, I'm going to make everything a very similar size because all this is already the same color and we'll, I'll probably just keep it in a similar order. But what I want to do is make the logo a lot larger. I'm going to make Happy Hour Real Estate a lot smaller. I'm going to make the date and the location a lot larger and make this text a similar size as well. And so you'll see here beyond the order of positioning, so reading top to bottom, there's nothing here to give us hierarchy. There's nothing here that helps one piece of text jump out to another. So if I was a, a consumer scrolling my Instagram and this graphic popped up in this kind of layout, I'd probably just scroll past because nothing in there is capturing my attention. What we want to do is think about what is who is my audience? What are they doing at the time of looking at my graphic? And what do I, what am I trying to communicate in this graphic? If you're like this person promoting an event, what's going to capture someone to wanting to come to that event? Because as someone who's not interested in real estate, I don't want to come to this event. But the people who are interested in real estate, if they saw this graphic, they would, that would capture their attention. And so thinking about what's going to capture my audience's attention, what few keywords can I really bring out? What few keywords can I bring out and elevate the hierarchy of so that it draws and it captures the attention of my audience and snatches them in? And then I can take them on a visual journey. So say, for example, this one here, the happy hour, really site happy hour, it captures my attention first. My brain then brings me down to the, the, the date and then it could be hit and miss whether I go to the host or to the logo name. Either of those doesn't matter because it doesn't matter who, what I go to next. The main thing is, is that I've got real estate happy hour and I'm like, cool, I think I want to go to that cool, I'm free July 18th. I'm free at this time. And I live near this bar. This is perfect. I'll go along. And so it's taking me on that journey. Whereas if this text here was the largest of the date, I don't care about July 18th. It's not even my birthday. My birthday is July the 2nd. And so what I, what we need to do is work out what's going to capture our audience's attention and make that the largest. And so with this graphic here, it's not telling me anything new and it's not making me want to read it. And so this is a problem I see with most DIY designers is they're not being bold enough with their hierarchy sizing and their hierarchy strategy to help things to stand out more than another. And so you'll see with this one, you don't know where you're looking. You don't, you don't, you're probably just going to scroll past it because it doesn't tell a story. So another graphic I want to show you is this one here. All of these are just templates that I found on Canva. So Canva's templates are actually doing quite a good job with this hierarchy. But what I see business owners doing is even when they're using a template, they're taking it and they're making it less bold and less strong and less size hierarchy and size contrasting difference that it stops working anymore. So this graphic here, you see personal branding. You might then read the per per power of personal branding. Your brain goes back and goes, cool, the power of personal branding. Amazing. Then you might start to look at some of these things. You might think, oh, what are these? Oh, it's here are some key benefits to addressing personal branding. And then right at the end, if this has been really interesting for you, you will then see this text at the bottom. Was if this text at the bottom was the largest, then I wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't capture my attention. But if I'm interested in personal branding, that's then going to capture my attention first. So let's butcher this graphic for a moment. It involved making this a lot smaller. And it also like, you can still see that this personal branding, because I've now made it smaller, what's usually standing out the most is the power of, which is okay. And these white boxes, because there's a really strong contrast there, those white boxes are what's standing out the most, even though personal branding is technically still the largest piece of text, because it's that different color, it's going to be a bit different. If I change this to even like a fluoro yellow, for example, it'd probably start to stand out a little bit more. But even so, if there's any kind of like, I'm not sure what's standing out most, you probably haven't got enough contrast in the sizing there. So making this really large is what's going to make a big difference. And like, even if I change these, for example, to being a different color, you can see how this doesn't stand out as much again. And our personal branding is now standing out again. So there's this really great push to, to and fro around how can I use the different concepts together, the color, the, color, the sizing, 
the positioning and all those different things to, to make things stand out in the way that I want them to, to be really strategic about what I'm trying to communicate so that my graphic stands out among the thousands of graphics that people are seeing every single day so that you can capture your right audience and take them on that visual journey. All right, another graphic I want to show you here is this one here. What note, what do you stand out? What stands out first? You see the we're hiring. And so if you're looking for a job, that's going to capture your attention. Next, you might see the content creator. I actually think these could be larger, but not too much larger because if I make these larger, it's starting to fight for attention from we're hiring. And while content creating and social media marketing are things I do want to stand out quite a lot, if there's too many things the same size, we get back to this problem where nothing is standing out and it becomes something that I don't want to interact with. And so you can still have things a bit larger, but if you're doing that, I'd probably then again make this bit a bit larger or I'd make something else a bit smaller to kind of help to balance that out so I still have that clear visual journey. So now where hiring stands out a lot, content creator stands out a lot now, and now I can think, all right, what's next? I can apply, I can send my CV here and here. And so taking that visual journey. All right, let's look at another one. It's time for a royal adventure. That clearly stands out the most. Isla's sixth birthday, see you at the party. My brain is literally going down the page here, but it's because of the sizing of that. See you at the party might nearly stand out more than the, the, the details here, but because of the positioning of it that our brain wants to read down. And the, like if this was up here, for example, would probably read that before Isla's sixth birthday, even though this text is slightly smaller because it's on that white background, it's standing out a lot more. Another example is this one here. Become a subscriber is standing out so much. What this contrast does as well is helps create a really dynamic look for your graphics, which means it's much more interesting to look at like even just design wise comparing this design and this design this one is so much more interesting and professional looking because of that contrast in size and so not being afraid to make like this text is size 17 and this text is size 77 like there is a big difference between them and that's what makes the graphic look good but something I'm unsure about with this one is if you were scrolling your social media for example is become a subscriber really going to catch you Probably not. So we need to be thinking about our messaging in top, on top of this as well. So I'm actually going to duplicate this and think of some different ways more strategically and messaging wise that I can communicate my point a bit better to capture people's attention. So if I was following this page, if I was really invested in them that I might consider becoming a subscriber just because, but usually we're looking for what's in it for me. And so if I look at the rest of this sentence of join our mailing list to receive the latest coastal style news and trends. So maybe if I, if I go like latest coastal trends, latest coast coastal style trends is my biggest piece of text that might become something that captures me in so i'm going to put that text up here instead all right so i've changed that text but obviously now it doesn't make sense like what are the latest coastal style trends so maybe i can change the text up here for newsletter a little bit all right that's working a little bit now and i could probably change this text here to have something different and if i wanted to because i'm going to be doubling up on the text but i think that still works so i could latest coastal style trends if i'm someone who's in maybe i'm about to create my house design, I'm trying to look, I'm um, in coastals my style, then seeing that text latest coastal style trends might draw me in. Or I could even do um, free tips to mailbox and or something like that. Of like, oh yes, I really want to get these free tips on the latest coastal style trends rather than become a subscriber because I have to look at what's in it for me. Another way you could manage this is kind of bolding or highlighting in different parts of the graphic. It is a second secondary level of hierarchy. So if I did latest coastal style trends a little bit bigger or a little bit bolder, or again, something I could try is that block in that background. This is a te technique I love to use, particularly with quotes as well, is I've got a big paragraph of a quote and I want to, or like a testimonial or something. And I want things to kind of just a couple of words to stand out rather than being a full paragraph, but I don't want to do a full intricate design. What I like to do is either bold text or even just insert a rectangle. So I'm just going to press R on my keyboard and that'll insert a rectangle. And I might just put a little bit of a basic box behind this text here to help it to stand out a little bit more. All right, so that's standing out some more. I don't love these colors, so I'm actually going to make this box. You're going to notice a difference that I do here. I'm actually going to duplicate this so I can show you. The difference between doing this kind of text where it's got the light color box and doing a dark color box with light color text as well. Let's explore what that looks like. So that's now standing out quite a lot. So you see if I compare that one to that one. The latest coastal style trend is standing out so much more when I have that really dark, strong background. This wouldn't work with all brands, but you can kind of begin to see how this might work for your business is trying to help things to stand out. And now the latest coastal style trends is starting to stand out. That's the secondary thing. I see become a subscriber and then I see this text rather than that text kind of just getting lost and I don't see it at all. Uh, so those are some things and some tools that you can use to help to, to create graphics that are going to stand out to your audience for what they actually care about. I'm going to show you a couple more graphics before we wrap up today that have a little bit less text 
text on them so you can see how you can make that work too. So how to build a memorable brand, like that's obviously either going to go into a carousel or maybe someone's going to have a really long caption underneath. This memorable brand text is standing out. But if I was to have this text here quite large, say if I make this a lot bigger. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking away the the bold sizing contrast here and making both of these a similar size just to kind of show you how much this design doesn't work anymore when it's when it's not that got that really strong contrast in size between that really bold sized heading and that really small subtext then it kind of just becomes a bit boring and a bit like just a bit meh looking rather than like oh that looks a bit edgy or a bit cool um, so just remembering to keep that to let yourself have the really large text compared to the really small text. Another example of that is this one here. This is really large. Did you know it is huge? This is size 164 compared to size 24. Don't be afraid to use that really strong level of hierarchy because this helps a design not to be boring. If this if this text here, if I just put this onto one line and a lot smaller, this design here is nowhere near as interesting as the one that had that really big, strong dynamic text. The strong dynamic text, I always talk about having brand elements, but if, if, you, if you didn't know, your text can be a brand element. Using that text really boldly and strongly can be a way to define your brand to make it look really edgy and fun and cool because having this this is a really great minimal design like I would even probably make this a bit smaller if I was doing a really minimal look but doing that is a totally different kind of design style compared to what it originally was and so leaning into what your design style is and not being afraid to have that large contrast in text Another version is this one here. This doesn't have much text at all, but they've just changed the color. There's some great ways to bring out text in like a, when you're just doing a block of text, like a testimonial or a quote or something like that, is to do what I said before of like bolding your text, putting a color block behind it or changing the color of that text like they have here on social media. You can change that and you can actually do all of those things within the same text box. They haven't done it on this one, which is pointless because you can actually change the color of text within the one text box. I'm just going to grab this and make it um, a different kind of color. And that's straight away easily for me to, I can just change that. I can change, I can be like, actually, no, I want build, I want personal brand to be the color. So I can highlight that, make that a different color. And it's just really easy to quickly change these things. I could even um, unbold a certain section if my text, my font has a bolding option. And again, I'm just changing all of this within the one text box. It's quite a quick change for me to do. All of this text is the same size, but using things like bolding or color, or even if I could add in like a color block in the background, will just change the way that this graphic looks and help me to highlight different things at different times if I need that for my graphics. So I hope that's been useful for you. I want you next time you're creating a graphic to really look deeply into, am I using hierarchy? Have I really thought about the right messaging that I'm using? Have I really thought about the right sizing? And is there actually enough contrast here? Have I thought about the journey that I'm taking people on and is that obvious or is my graphic got everything the same size in a way that's making my design look overwhelming to look at unclear of what to look at next and not standing out to my audience in way, the ways that it needs to. So if you found this helpful, then I want to encourage you to, to design principles are really, really useful for our business. It helps our graphics to not only look professional and look great, but also to be really strategic and to communicate and actually ha like there's no point you creating a really dodgy graphic on Canva and then posting it to Instagram and then having crickets because no one's actually stopping to see your post. You've then wasted that time. If you want to make sure you're using your time well and actually creating robust graphics that work strategically, I would love to have you in my seriously in business design challenge. It is a three-part little video series that's going to help you look at your brand and create a really robust brand and also teach you a couple of different Canva hacks and design principles that are going to help your designs to stand out and look really amazing. So that's just a totally free series. You can access that at the link below and I hope that you'll join me because it is, it is, you can watch it right now. You can binge the whole thing and you can begin to see the power of design be at play in your own business. So thank you for joining me. I'll see you in a couple of weeks for another tutorial. Bye.